Good afternoon and welcome to the Fox Ins Group PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time by the Q&A tab situated in the right corner of your screen. Just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives in the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand over to Guy Gittin, the CEO. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon, uh, and thank you everyone for joining today's presentation. We're very excited to be able to explain about uh, our journey and what we have ahead for us here at Foxton's. Um, I've had the privilege of being able to say that I'm the CEO of this fantastic business for the last seven months, um, and um, it really has been a privilege to be able to come back and, and to, to join the business where I actually started my career uh, 20 years ago, and, and I familiarly tell that story to many of our new starters that um, having started my career here, uh, just as the business was really the original disruptor of the property market here in London, and to have enjoyed the rise through the ranks of becoming the top salesperson um, and then running one of their largest, or if not the largest office in South Kensington, um, really did define the rest of my career, just as Foxton's was really defining how London property would be operated for the next 20 years. Uh, and, and it's been a fantastic journey. And, and having cut my teeth, having left university, um, I came to London uh, and had this wonderful experience for four or five years, uh, where I gained a huge amount of experience uh, and, and really did understand from an operational standpoint what made Foxton's so different to everybody else um, on the uh, uh, on the in the ground here in, in London, um, uh, and during that journey, um, I, when I left Foxtons, I, I I moved to uh, have some experience working overseas for a property entrepreneur called Peter de Savre. Um, I worked in the Caribbean for four years as his sales director, selling mixed use developments all across the Caribbean chain, which was an enormous uh, an enormous benefit to my long term career, huge experience. Um, and also um, enabled me then to come back to London where I uh, worked for Savills, uh, representing One High Park and Candy and Candy um, in, uh, in, in Knightsbridge where they were building the most expensive development in the world. Um, uh, and then after that, I joined a business called Chesterton's, um, originally starting as a sales manager and then working my way up uh, through to, uh, to being the CEO of that business. And actually, when I took over that business uh, four and a half years ago, uh, Chesterton's were in a very similar situation to Foxton's was seven years ago where we'd actually you know there were a number of cultural issues the operational uh, machine ha had i suppose really uh, not been optimized for delivering growth um, and within that four year time frame i, I took a business that was uh, producing a loss shortly before i took it over uh, to producing consecutive years of revenue and profit growth for the business um, uh, and i was proud to have left that business um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a much better state than when we started um, and then had the enormous privilege of coming back to Foxton's. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that operational review as we get into the presentation. Um, but as you can see, I'm also joined uh, here by uh, Chris Huff, our Chief Financial Operating uh, Officer. Um, and uh, Chris has had a, a distinguished career, um, not only here at, at Foxton's, where he was before becoming the CFO, uh, was uh, working for Deloitte as a director, um, but also uh, he also come through the ranks at Foxton's and having previously been uh, the director of finance as well. So um, I feel very uh, privileged to be working alongside Chris and it's been a great help for me really uh, understanding the business very, very quickly and helping me make some very strategic, uh, strong decisions early on. Um, and some of the results of that we can share with you uh, over the next few slides. Um, thank you very much. Throughout this presentation, I hope that we can um, really highlight the opportunity that we have here at Foxton's and, and also share some of the genuine enthusiasm and excitement that we share uh, for what the future looks like. And, and having returned back to this business um, to see uh, these opportunities for me is, is, is really what, what has brought me back and, and, and really what I'm so excited about. And to give you an overview, if you've never heard of Foxton's or if you don't really quite understand our operating model, uh, Foxton's is a full service residential property agent operating across London uh, with and um, with plus three offices just outside of London going as far as Guildford. Um, within that full service, we include uh, lettings, we include sales, 
uh, and financial services through our uh, financial services firm called Alexander Hall, where we uh, distribute mortgages using the leads that we create from the front offices from sales. Um, and then we obviously have the, re the remortgaging business as well, which becomes uh, uh, non-cyclical uh, and reoccurring revenue for that part of the business. Um, and then going up to the top, which is our, our lettings business, this has transformed the business, and certainly there's been a big move, not only within the industry, but certainly here at Foxton's, uh, for that change in focus, moving from what was very, very heavily focused on uh, being a sales machine, um, and, and that sales revenue was a much larger part of, of group revenue, even just going back six or seven years, to today where we are proud to say that 62% of our revenue comes from this high quality, reoccurring revenue stream that we develop in, in lettings and of course because of the nature of lettings not only is it um, is it high quality but but it's very very sticky and we often find that the life cycle of, of some of our lettings landlords um, is enormous uh, and the amount of value that we get both sides is, is is very very important so it is a very large part of our focus moving forward is to continue to turbocharge uh, that group revenue in lettings um, so that we can complement and make the business much more resilient and i think you only have to look at what's happened in the london market or in the global market uh coming out of the back of um of the uh, of the pandemic um, our resilience within the business, but the resilience of that lettings income was incredible. Um, and, and while I hasten to, to, I don't really want to call anything um, recession-proof, it's almost as good as, uh, and very much is this, this high quality earnings that we're focused on. Um, lettings is a very, uh, a very manual process uh, from when we uh, onboard uh, half a million tenants a year, we have to then register them, we have to carry out physical viewings, we then, once we've agreed the price, we then got a whole process that follows thereafter that previously has been very, very, um, very hands on. And, and our uh, medium term focus now is to revolutionize that process and really digitalize that as much as we possibly can do, which is uh, a very exciting journey, both within the industry, but particularly for, for, for Foxes, because we will be at the forefront of that with some of our developments that we'll be bringing to market um, over the next 12 months. Um, sales, of course, sales was originally uh, the, the cornerstone of Foxton's. Uh, it's what really we gained our reputation for delivering the best kind of results um, for, for sales for our clients when they were selling their properties. Um, and um, really, uh, we, we continue that march, but we have lost market share, particularly in sales, over the last seven years, which we'll share with you uh, on a future slide. Um, that represents 31% of our group revenue, um, and there's obviously very, very good cross-selling into lettings. Once we've sold a, uh, a, an investment unit, we can hand that over to lettings as a, a new long-term lettings unit. And we also obviously are creating these financial service referrals, which feeds the Alexander Hall business. Um, we're, we're approximately uh, 1,250 employees. We are a growing business at the moment. Uh, we operate across 60 offices. And as I've said, three of those are outside of London and the rest are spread geographically across London, wherever we see volume and value opportunities uh, and very much our future growth, uh, which, is, uh, which is focused pr primarily on driving organic growth, particularly in the lettings opportunity, um, uh, adding into that uh, with, uh, with, with acquisitions um, uh, and then also growing that, that sticky revenue uh, within our financial services. And we'll, we'll cover a little bit of that uh, on the following slides. So, um, highlights for 2022. Uh, it was a solid year of progress, really, um, and we do identify significant unfulfilled potential within the group, but we are pleased that there has been a continued move forward with our uh, with our profit, albeit from a from a low base. But we do have absolute aspirations uh, in the medium term of delivering this business back to circa twenty five to thirty million pounds of operating profit. Um, and everybody asks what medium term is. We think that's within achievable within the next four years, um, and the, the spread of uh, of, of that um, of that uh, operational target uh, for profit really is depending upon what the sales market is doing moving up and down uh, but we are absolutely building that reoccurring lettings revenue to really un underpin the business and make us very resilient moving into future markets um, our strategic priorities have absolutely been uh, focused on delivering this growth um, uh, and as i said numerous times on that lettings revenue um, and that lettings business for us and i'm going to go into the next slide which talks about the operational review uh, which is um, which is uh, the key issues that we've identified 
uh, and talking about that rebuild. Before we do that, I'll hand over to Chris to talk about the numbers. Yep, thank you, Guy, and good afternoon, everyone. On slide six, I've set out some of the key financial metrics from the 2022 results. I'm hoping these will provide some context for today's presentation and also demonstrate, as Guy mentioned, the financial progress we have been making. So starting with revenue, revenue in 2022 grew by 13.8 million. That's around 11% uh, 11 growth. That growth was predominantly driven by the lettings business where revenues grew, grew by 12.6 million or 17% year on year. And that increase in lettings revenue was predominantly driven by two things. Firstly, uh, 7.6 million of revenue growth from growth in the organic lettings portfolio and 5 million of incremental revenues from the acquisitions we completed in 2021 and 2022. Guy will talk to um, the acquisition strategy a little bit more later on. We've got a good level of operating leverage in the business, which meant revenue growth dropped through to a healthy profit. Um, and that's even after making various cost investments we made in 2022 to enhance our capabilities. Some of those in cost investments were focused on getting the right headcount into the business, driving marketing activity in the right areas, and also overhauling the remuneration structures for our fee owners. So with that in mind, a just operating profit um, increased by 56% to 13.9 million, and a just operating profit margin increased to around 10%. In 2022, the operating leverage in the business was circa five times, and that demonstrates the outsized returns which business can enjoy from uh, top line revenue growth. And finally, on the PL, PVT grew by 115% to 11.9 million. Cash generation in 2022 was strong. We delivered 7.7 .7 million of net free cash flow, uh, and these results overall supported a good level of shareholder cash returns. Um, firstly, we had the four-year dividend that was declared at 0.9 pence per share. That's double what we, we had in 2021. And we also returned a third of 4.9 million through share buybacks. If there's any other questions on the financials, I'm very happy to take those later on in the session. Back to you, Guy. Thank you, Chris. So our investment case, um, we are a highly resilient business with a significant upside potential from the operational improvements that we're making and have been making since my arrival seven months ago. Uh, primarily, we operate in highly valuable markets. And of course, being a state agent, um, if you operate in the highest value markets, you will command uh, some of the highest fees. And, and London is absolutely a, a prime example of this um, uh, with our average price in London um, being circa 600,000 pounds. Um, not only uh, is that fee opportunity very exciting for us, the volume of transactions that we see in London is extremely interesting for both sales and lettings. Um, and we're also very proud of, uh, of the fee level that we're able to command here at Fox's, which really is a USP um, of, of commanding that incredibly high uh, uh, premium fee that we're, that we're able to hold right away across the market and uh, and be with that with that fee also the highest volume market for um, for bringing properties for sale and nettings to uh, to the market through uh, through our business um, the resilience of the business model I've touched on earlier uh, the non-cyclical reoccurring revenues uh, that we find in nettings um, really do remove that uh, that up and down part of the of the sales market and um, is, is, is very very attractive for us as a business moving forward um, ultimately, uh, coming back to the business, uh, as I've had the opportunity to do and to carry out my review and to, to spot the operational improvement opportunities uh, has been enormous. Uh, without exception, every every department I've sat with um, and looked at their you know, the exact operation of that of that machine, we've been able to find many many efficiencies and new ways of operating, uh, particularly looking at tech and data, which will which we'll share with you shortly. Um, the operational leverage, which, which Chris has touched on in the previous slide, um, you know, once we've started to build our, our revenue, that will absolutely outstrip uh, profit growth. And I think that last year is actually uh, a good indicator of that. And we now must just really need to focus on building that, uh, that revenue for the business, particularly with the buy and build opportunity that we see uh, ourselves um, to be able to go and make acquisitions of the very highly fragmented market uh, that we operate within within London. Um, and of course, uh, the market has been very subdued since really 
uh, since 2018, we've seen consecutive years of, uh, of, of market decline for sales. There is a significant opportunity of any upside uh, on that sales market recovery, which, which we haven't baked into the plan, but it's there absolutely as an upside. Um, you can see our sad demise from the uh, heady days of 2016 when Foxton's was, was circa 180 pence a share um, and following the decline of our businesses uh, uh, market share and, and ultimately the revenues and therefore the profit that this business has been delivering uh, we've seen that sad decline um, which gave me the opportunity to come back to the business um, uh, uh, midway through last year um, we do see that revenues uh, and profit you know this year has given us uh, a level that, that, that we've not seen since 2019 uh, that isn't reflected in, in the share price and that again we believe is underpinning the opportunity uh, that, that hopefully presents itself to you today so um, my operational review, I, I've been very, very involved in every department of this business. Um, I've sat with every office, I've visited every office and spoke to pretty much every agent uh, and every person who works in this business. Um, and, and I'm proud to report that actually the fundamentals that once made Foxton's unbeatable uh, in the early noughties are still absolutely within this business. We've just got to evolve and modernize ourselves and perhaps evolve and, and get back to being the innovators within the industry that we were once renowned for uh, in order to deliver um, and get back to that leading, uh, that leading position. Um, if we look at a, a group particular uh, operation, we think that there was very little investment in these growth drivers. You know, we should have started acquisitions five years ago, like some of our competitors did. Uh, we would have been in a very different place if that, if that had been the case. Um, we were cutting uh, costs in the wrong areas. For example, um, over the last five or six years, we continued each year to cut the number of fee owners in the front offices, um, and that has really led that market share decline. If you don't have the fee owners on the ground, you can't deliver uh, market share growth and, and, and you can't deliver results for clients. So certainly something that's been very, very apparent to me coming in. Um, over the last seven months, we've also removed circa two and a half million pounds of, of cost at senior management level, at the C-suite level of this business. We've removed two and a half million pounds, which has been reinvested back into those um, into those fee earning opportunities on the ground. And that's already started to make an enormous improvement to the number of viewings that we're carrying out and therefore the growth of our market share um, uh, there, therefore as well, which we're, we're, we're very, very encouraged by. Um, this business was built upon being the leaders of industry in terms of technology. We were the first agent in the UK to develop and have a completely in-house built CRM, which was an end-to-end -end platform created by this business 20 years ago at huge expense. And that really was the start of the secret source that, 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 that gave and drove the market share for Foxtons in those early days. Um, we've been collecting data for 20 years, which is probably at least 10 years uh, uh, longer than our closest competitors. And our database here, our proprietary database at Foxtons is enormous. The reality is we've been doing very, very little with it. Um, and that again is going to be a very poor, a very important part of that innovation um, and certainly that value being driven out of that historic database um, is, is extremely important. We need to, be, to get back to being the innovators within the industry um, and we have got some, um, some, uh, some highly sophisticated um, uh, innovation that we're bringing to the industry um, over the next six months that we're very excited about, particularly focused on, uh, on, on, on the lettings processes and, uh, and, and and therefore growing that re reoccurring uh, revenue. So uh, big upsides on that for us. Uh, moving into lettings, um, shocked to have discovered that really over the last four years, this business is on an organic portfolio growth. If you look at the number of units that we had within our portfolio, it's only grown organically by 1% per year. Uh, which is, uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll, you'll agree, is, a, is an underwhelming number. We've got to get back to focusing on that organic growth. Um, I believe that that organic growth can completely come from our historic, enormous database um, of past transactions and history that we've dealt with nearly half the people who live in London, um, which is very, very exciting. Um, organic growth is difficult to deliver in lettings, but absolutely, given the power of what we have within our, our, our CRM and our database, I'm very, very positive that we can, we can turbocharge that uh, organic growth um, and get back to where we need to be. Um, we talked about acquisitions. Foxtons have only started bolting on lettings books and lettings businesses in 2020. 
circa five years or three years, four, four years, five years um, after some of our competitors here in London, um, we would have been in a very different situation if we'd have started it earlier. Instead of doing cold start offices in new locations, which is what the business was, at, how the business was expanding, of course, that's become much more challenging um, as we didn't have the same volume of lettings, buy to lets being purchased uh, from the sales side and then being handed over to the lettings book. Um, now we're really focused on growing that, uh, that that business for us, which is which is a, a, a massive part of our efforts and will deliver this, this, this uplift for us almost entirely on its own. Um, sales, um, we've been talking about diluting what once made Foxton's great and, and, and that, that dilution both in cutting costs but also not continuing to lead that innovation and cutting headcount in the front offices. We've seen the market share decline from 4.5% in 2016, all the way down to 3.4% in 2022. Um, now, we're still almost market leaders at 3.4%, but that decline in market share doesn't actually tell the whole story because during that period of time, we've also lost a disproportionate amount of our market share within the prime market. We've gone almost completely disappeared uh, from the prime markets in the different areas where we operate. You might want to say that that for, for Foxes is probably properties above a million pounds. We're very strong below, but we really need to now start to build our way and earn our way back into those higher value properties, just as we used to be 15 years ago when I was still instructing properties at 2.5% and 3% as, a, uh, as, a, as an office manager, albeit we, we earned our way into that prime market, um, and that really is a focus for the business. But that's a long-term goal. That is not something that we can click our fingers and we'll be instantly back in there. We, that will be a result of getting everything right over the next three years, whether it be the marketing, the people we employ, the training, the headcount, etc., etc. Has all got to be right for us to earn our way back in there. But what we can do, we feel very strongly, is grow that market share rapidly in the market, the volume market, where we already own and operate uh, within uh, and dominate within many markets. Um, um, and then we talk about our financial, financial services uh, uh, machine. Um, obviously, we're, we're throwing off high volumes of financial services referrals from the sales uh, side of the business. Um, it was a surprise to me that actually the number of fee earners within Alexander Hall have been continued to be cut just as head fee earners have been cut in other parts of the business. And what that had meant was that we were actually throwing off too many financial services referrals for the for Alexander Hall to be able to process uh, and deliver a very nice problem, um, I'm sure you'll agree to have, that many, many financial services firms would, would, would could only dream of. Um, we're now building back the headcount um, for financial services, we're building back the headcount in lettings, and we're doing the same uh, in sales. And of course, this means that um, there, there is, a, there is a, a lag, because many of these fee earners, sales is a great example, and, and financial services, when we onboard somebody who's never done the job before, realistically, it's a six to nine month process to get that person up to speed so that we've trained them enough to become a consistent fear. And so very much while we're growing um, our, our headcount this year, Chris and I have been balancing very carefully to make sure that we can still grow uh, and deliver the profit levels that we've discussed, which we're very confident in for, for, for this year. So strategic priorities, uh, you've heard me talk about obviously lettings being at the top here, um, this organic growth for lettings is very important. I believe given our database, given our renewed fresh approach to how we're going to be marketing, uh, making sure that we're the most visible agents back on the streets of London again, combined with delivering and growing in-house the best agents, that organic growth should be charged with being between three to five percent uh, on an annualized growth. That's a high growth um, a target, um, but but if we get everything right, I, I'm, I'm confident that we can achieve it. Um, and then we're also growing through acquisitions. You may um, have heard, we're very proud to have announced just before we announced our results uh, this month, we'd actually made, uh, concluded on the acquisition of Atkinson McLeod, uh, which was a four branch uh, offering, a four branch lettings focused estate agency um, in East London, a fantastic business, very well operated. And like many of these smaller independents across London, of which there are 3,600 of these independent businesses, um, they're coming to the point where the owners have owned them for, for, for 15 to 20 years. Um, they've had a fantastic lifestyle out of them. The changing nature of 
the lettings industry um, is making people decide that now might be a good time to, 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 to sell and move on uh, to pastures new, which is a fantastic opportunity for us. Um, and, and actually, Atkinson McLeod was identified, um, engaged, and closed entirely in-house here at Foxton's using our uh, acquisitions team, no external agents, no external uh, uh, um, interaction, um, and we held the hand of the of the owners of that business all the way through, and we'll be, over the next few months, integrating them. In fact, actually tomorrow I'm going down to meet all of the team uh, where we have all of the, 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 um, the employees within the team coming to meet us and my team from Foxton's as we then integrate them into the rest of the business. So hugely exciting. And the returns um, on those types of uh, opportunities are in excess of 20%. Um, some of our more recent um, uh, acquisitions have actually been closer to 20 to 30%, which is uh, which has obviously been um, aided by some uh, price growth within lettings. And then we talk about sales, the improvements within sales, our strategic priorities to grow that market share back to the 2016 levels of 4.5%. In the medium term, we've got to slowly and carefully always have that target of getting back into the higher value markets, uh, but while retaining and protecting our premium fees within the market, um, which obviously delivers um, a, a much, much better margin than a lot of our competitors do on their sales businesses. And um, finding uh, financial services, um, we would like to target a, a revenue growth of circa 7 to 10% per annum. And we really believe that we can do that given the volume of opportunity that I see that's being given off from the sales side of this business, which is very exciting. Now, for, for, for financial services, very much in a growth year this year, while we're growing that headcount um, in, the, in the medium term future. All of that means that we're very proud to put onto paper for the first time, uh, I think, in, in recent memory for Foxton's. We're setting the stall out today to say that we are aiming for 25 to 30 million pounds of operating profit um, and a 15% plus profit margin um, in the medium term in the next four years, both double more or less where, where we are today. Okay. Um, Ultimately, uh, I believe passionately about the opportunity that we have in front of us. I can only say from first-hand experience that coming back to this business after a 15-year hiatus um, ha ha has been incredibly exciting for me individually because I can see the opportunity that we've had. Knowing the journey that I've taken other businesses on, the opportunity to do that here, albeit on a slightly larger scale, um, is hugely exciting. The team that I am supported by without a doubt are the best uh, individuals and the best in their departments across the industry. Uh, we have people who've worked in this business for 20 years plus who are at the, absolutely at the top of the industry. Um, and I believe that given now this new focus on operation improvement, and given now a new strategic priority set that we can absolutely deliver this uh, medium term um, uh, great ambition as a base case. Uh, and actually we're looking forward to hopefully being able to show that uh, over the next year or so that we've been able to over deliver on this on this promise in the early, in the early parts. Um, we look forward to answering your questions, some of which I know have been coming in um, through uh, through the um, through the online portal, um, and very much appreciate all of your time listening into today's presentation. Guy, Chris, thank you very much for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab, which is situated on the top right-hand corner of your screen. But just while the company take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you that recording of this presentation along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. As you can see, we've received a number of questions throughout today's presentation, and thank you to all the investors for submitting those. Mohammed, could I just ask you to read out the questions where appropriate to do so, and then I'll pick up from you at the end. Thank you. First question, any plans to expand outside of London? Um, well, thank you for that question, Ian. Um, at the moment, there is such a huge opportunity for us still within the M25. As I said, that very fragmented nature of the market means that there are high quality lettings books that we could be bolting straight into this machine um, in order to be able to uh, you know, grow the reoccurring revenue, which is a, which is a primary focus of ours. Um, however, I absolutely recognize that there are high value, high volume locations, particularly within the commuter belts um, of, of, of London, where there, where, where there are absolutely opportunities. These expansions into new areas will absolutely be led by acquisition. So it will be a case of finding and engaging 
with the correct uh, leading lettings agents to buy that lettings portfolio day one and then bolt into it all of the efficiencies that we can build uh, and bring through our highly efficient machine uh, that has been developed. So I think absolutely, you know, we are already in Guildford um, and some of those surrounding areas and we've identified other lead uh, commuter belt locations that could be complementary to that. Um, but our primary focus is, is really filling in those high volume, high value areas within that uh, within the M25, uh, where we, we know there are those 3,600 independent agents, many of whom we're, we're, we're on a, an ongoing dialect basis with, uh, in order to, to, to fold into our Fox's machine, which is highly profitable um, and will deliver that, uh, that, that, very re that very valuable reoccurring income in the medium term. A couple of questions on acquisitions. The first one, do we have any more acquisitions in the pipeline for 2023? Um, we are always talking to uh, potential sellers. Uh, as I said, we have uh, an external, uh, we have an internal team who solely focus on the list, fo focusing on my list of those 3,600. We've got them ranked in, in order of the number of properties that they bring to the market and lettings, um, and we're out there talking and engaging with them. Um, obviously, there's some sensitive information surrounding that, uh, but the, the better we have a, a very good reputation um, within the London estate agency world for, for holding independent owners hands through what is actually a very complicated transaction um, and being good to our word that paying a fair price but but, but a price that we uh, that we believe in uh, is fair for the market value um so yeah we're, we're out there talking to people all the time and the third question around should we be paying for acquisitions and shares and how do you avoid a countrywide type situation yeah no, it's, it's, it's a good question in terms of um, how we structure these deals Historically, we've, we've funded the deals through free cash generation. Um, the question may have been linked to does offering shares, offering paper, get better buy-in from the sellers. Actually, when I look at these businesses, the most important people to retain in those businesses are those who are customer-facing rather than the company directors. And it's actually those people who are customer-facing who we ensure we retain, we retain them through appropriate uh, retention bonuses and really to get that continuity of service for the landlords which is so so critical for us the other way we structure it is through retention money so typically 12 months deferred based on part upon compliance of the of the business we've bought but also performance revenue performance of that business so that, that allows us to um, ensure that when we are paying for these businesses with cash you know we, we, we get the right very right amount of buy-in from those who are critical to business but we, we would also look at other structures such as such, such as shares if it were appropriate. In terms of the countrywide comment, I think one one I'm not going to comment particularly on countrywide, but we've got to remember that what we're, what we're buying are businesses which are heavily focused on lettings. You know, it's highly sticky revenue, reoccurring contractual revenue. When some historical deals done by other players in the market focus on more transactional sales businesses. Good example would be Axon McLeod. That was a 90% lettings business, so it's very, very different. So we really are buying some really resilient revenue there, um, make, retaining the right people in the business. And that's how we get those 20% plus returns um, you, you mentioned earlier. Definitely. Do you see regulation as a positive driver for the lettings business? Thank you, Chris, for that question. Um, I, there, are, there are absolutely some regulations that we welcome um, and that should be in place. Uh, some regulation that we've seen over the last year or two has actually been an opportunity for Foxtons. Um, a good example of this is the change in EICR regulations for uh, landlords' fuse boxes and, and electrical certificates that come with it. Um, Foxtons made circa £750,000 of additional fees that year because of this change in regulation um, that required many of our landlords to have a new certificate and even actually um, uh, fit new fuse boards. Now, obviously, on the horizon, We've got a number of changes uh, that, that, that are possibly being murmured, changes and improvements to the energy performance of, of lettings properties, um, and also changes within the industry of regulation and also uh, making sure that perhaps we're continuing to become more professional as an outfit. And I think if you look at, uh, at, at Foxons particularly, we are highly professional uh, operation, and I think some of those changes uh, will only play into our hands, particularly when we're looking at that acquisition strategy as smaller independent agents really struggle with that huge burden of regulation. You know, it's fine for Foxes because we've got 10 people sitting downstairs making sure that we are compliant um, and making sure that we're, you know, that we're doing everything right. A small independent just cannot afford the manpower to be able to do that. Uh, and that for us is another reason why we're seeing this, um, why we're seeing this amalgamation 
um, going, going on within the industry. What part does technology and data have in the delivery of the strategy, Chris? Uh, Chris, thanks for that. I, I mean, uh, fundamentally, I am a data-driven leader. Uh, everything that we operate, everything we do, has got to be led by data. And that was one of the most exciting opportunities about coming back to Foxton's was knowing uh, from my time here 20 years ago, the size of this database. I mean, there is no doubt that it is not just a little bit bigger than our closest competitors. It's in a different postcode altogether. Um, that opportunity to do the right things with that database prevents, pre presents huge opportunity. Now, when I first came uh, back to London, having led a data transformation of my previous business, um, I was I was excited and I said, great guys, you know, send me the logins for all of the live dashboards. I can't wait to get into the data. Um, uh, and everybody looked at me like I had two heads. Um, and I, what I was sent was basically old school uh, Excel spreadsheets that most of the time didn't actually mirror up anyway. So the last six months, my data team downstairs have been creating and building an entirely new data platform that the business is now using in order to be able to spot opportunities, spot under and over performance, um, and ultimately realign ourselves with understanding what parts of our business that we should be operating and, and optimizing in order to deliver the right types of results. And that's without then the next next stage of this is, is starting to apply um, uh, data science on the millions of transactional data history that we have locked within our, our CRM downstairs so that we can then start to machine learn the, the various processes to give us lead scoring on, as one example, the half a million lettings uh, tenant leads that we receive each year. It's simply too many for any agent to be able to process. But actually, when using that historical transactional data with data science um, and some, some very, very smart algorithms, we can then start to identify within the half a million who are the 50,000 that we absolutely know could do a deal today um, uh, uh, based on their transactional history and all the other thousands of data points that we can gather on them. So yeah, certainly very interesting and it, and it will be a primary part of our progress moving forward about getting us back on that data journey. Good example of that, Chris, is that we've just spent um, a relatively small amount of money um, building uh, an entirely new data suite um, and, and a data uh, a data infrastructure. Um, within the next two months, we're very proud to be able to say that we will have delivered um, uh, a data link for the business, um, something that the CRM team have been asking for for about five or six years, just never been given the budget for it. So very excited because once we do that, not only will we be able to ingest um, and analyze our own data internally, uh, but we'll also be able to look at the thousands of external sources that we can cross-reference to then generate more opportunities moving forward. One for Chris. Uh, whilst dividends and share buybacks are beneficial, if you not need capital to grow the business, either organically or inorganically, how will you balance this and what takes preference? That's from James. Yeah, th thanks, James. I think uh, absolutely, you're absolutely right. O organic growth, as we've just set out in the plans, is absolutely critical. So we've got a well-established capital allocation um, policy. First one is absolutely to maintain enough strength in the balance sheet. We, we, we have we are debt free today. We maintain a, a good strong balance sheet. So that's absolutely number one priority. Number two is then to have uh, sufficient capital and prioritise it in organic growth. So some of the areas guys talked about earlier today. Number three is all about the dividend. And we've got the dividend policy, 35% to 40% of profit after tax. Um, and we look to maintain that dividend at an appropriate level. And fourthly is the lettings acquisition. So identifying, targeting those high quality lettings books, integrating them into our business and ultimately re returning uh, those returns on investments of, of 20% plus we talked about earlier. And then fifthly, it's the excess capital, if there is an excess capital in the, in the business, that's returned to shareholders um, in, in an appropriate form. Historically, that's been buy buy back. So hopefully that gives you a bit of colour. Uh, organic growth is absolutely up there and, and it, is, it is the highest priority for us. And one from Andy. Um, what can Foxtons do to turbocharge growth and nettings? And do we have an organic target growth rate? Um, well, the biggest weapon that we have in our organic growth is, is well, we've got two fantastic weapons. Number one is the people and the culture and the focus of what we're asking the business to do. And the second part of that is obviously, as I've explained before, the opportunity that is buried within our database is, is bigger than any other agent has within London. And if you think about trying to make sure that you are having the opportunity for a lettings listing, 
you have to stay in contact with that landlord who let's say it's left by another agent you've got to stay in contact with that landlord all the way through that uh, that tenancy and you just have to make sure that within that two month period that that that, that, that current tenant might be moving out and that, that property may be coming back to the market, you've also got to make sure that you're on the phone engaging with that landlord in an intelligent way and adding value to the conversation. Um, that's not, that's, there's, no easy, there's no easy formula for that, um, but obviously using our data learning and, and a lot of those external sources, we know we can give ourselves a much higher priority chance of speaking to people at the right time within that journey. Um, so that's very, very exciting for us. Another part of this was really within this business, um, there was no focus on, on volume. And when I arrived here six or seven months ago, I had uh, managers uh, of lettings, uh, businesses and lettings offices, and the area directors, and even the head of lettings, coming up and almost self-congratulating themselves uh, in front of me because they'd grown the, the, their revenue by 20%. Um, and of course, we saw 20% uplift in the, in the uh, lettings values last year, which essentially meant that everybody did 20% uh, uh, more, more on their revenue. The reality is now all of our front offices, our negotiators, um, our area directors, our head of lettings, myself, Chris, we've now split that that, uh, that, uh, that that remuneration, instead of solely being focused on revenue, we're also charging people with growing their volume as well. So it's no good just knocking your, your revenue out the target uh, target out of the out of the park because the, the market's grown. You've also got to show us that you're growing units, and that cultural change within the business has been enormous. You know, we have a, a famous Friday meeting here at Foxtons where all of the salespeople come together and they shout out their numbers. Well. Up until seven months ago, those numbers were always just the revenue number that you might have, have, have been able to close to the business. But now, as a starting point of this change, as a good example, we're now, first of all, the first number they call out is what the volume that they've done, and then it's the revenue number. Um, and that change within the culture, the way that we view the business, I think is, is, is massively important. Um, and then it's down to us operationally to make sure that we're uh, targeting this growth and, and helping use the data uh, and the processes that we have to be the fastest to bring new units to the market, but then absolutely our focus has got to be the quickest to get that lettings uh, contract concluded. So that means we've got to be the quickest to do the viewings, we've got to be the quickest to agree the offers, and then we've got to be the quickest to get it legally bound within that long process. So reducing the time of that process should put us in a, at an advantage to improve our instruction to net ratio, which will automatically deliver organic growth. And then one from Neil. Are you concerned about the government legislating on the rental market as it's now very unaffordable? Um, I mean, very unaffordable is, uh, it, it depends upon who you're looking at. Uh, the, the half a million letting tenants that we register every, uh, every year are all fighting for a very small proportion of stock. Now, absolutely, I recognise that within the whole of London, this, this the, the structure is broken from, from a government aspect. What we desperately need are more lettings units. And the, the, the decision by the government um, five years ago to remove interest tax relief, some of you may be landlords, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, has meant that instead of seeing lots more uh, buy-to-let investors coming into the market, the new investors coming in has, has started to slow down. Um, and by natural attrition, the, the overall size of the portfolio is very, very fractionally each year getting slightly smaller, um, but that the size of that pie is still enormous. Ultimately, what we've got to focus on is taking a, a larger percentage of that um, and, and, and bringing that onto the market so that we can conclude these deals. Um, the market is, is in tension at the moment. There is tension on the prices that are being achieved, um, but we have so much demand that actually um, it, it's purely a supply and demand led, uh, led, led situation and people, unfortunately, as I've said on, on record, who are being priced out of, of, of a particular area, exactly the same as when sales prices go up, might have to, um, may have to compromise on their search criteria. It might have to be a slightly different area or a slightly different property type in order to fulfill that requirement. But the, the volume of, 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 of people looking is so high uh, that we don't see any... Um, we don't. With this price increase is, is still is still justified, and it's still absolutely being met by uh, by tenants at the moment. Um, am I, are we concerned that the government may take a move, as we've seen externally outside of London, to cap um, rental increases? It, it may well happen, but the reality for this business is that um, 
you know, people will still need to use an agent in order to find and engage and let those properties and absolutely still manage that portfolio um, through that through that time frame. So if that happens, we might not see this continued price rate. Uh, price rise, but but the values that are still being achieved today um, are, are what we're focused on. The question from Keith: Why bother with the sales business? Why not just focus on lettings? The market doesn't seem to understand the lettings focus of the business. Um, you're quite right. I agree that the market doesn't understand the, the lettings focus of this business, which is a shame because I think if it did, um, I think it would be reflected in our share price. The reality is that you can't have a successful lettings business, in my opinion, unless you have a sales arm. Um, that sales arm is very often, at different times in the sales market, sending over new opportunities to be able to feed that machine. That's where our organic growth comes from for lettings, uh, as well as all of these other parts that we've been talking about. And at various at various points in the year, or in the sales cycle, or even in the lettings cycle, it may be that, for example, a landlord may come to us and say, oh, we're thinking of selling this investment unit could you try it on the sales market well if we didn't have a sales uh, a sales arm that would get handed over to uh, a different agent and of course two months later when that property hasn't sold guess who would get that lettings instruction it wouldn't be coming back to us so it's very very important that we are a full service uh, operation and i believe firmly that we can get back to producing consistent levels of profitability for the sales business uh, but we absolutely must focus on that on, on growing the lettings uh, reoccurring revenue hopefully that answers your question one from james uh foxton's brand seems to have lost its usp which was a guaranteed strong sales effort how do we rebuild this this is purely about culture. This is about how we believe the sales teams should be operated. And, and to have gone from um, circa four and a half negotiators as, as an average per, per branch uh, down to two and a half or three per branch means that you lose that velocity and that momentum and that very, very important sales culture that was once what made Foxton's absolutely unbeatable. Now, we are growing these, these sales teams uh, quickly and we're going back to face-to-face -face training, all of the training of this business, which was once renowned across the industry as being industry leading, um, was, was turned digital. We're now bringing that back to be face-to-face, -face, being led by uh, by the best estate agents in, uh, in, in the business. And, and, and that, again, is generating this longer-term culture of rebuilding back of those areas of, of USPs. Another great USP was, was obviously our visibility uh, and our brand um, uh, uh, visibility in, in the areas that we operated. And we've always just become a little bit grey um, in, in the ether. Um, and really now it's about pushing back into that, making sure that we're visible, making sure we've got the best people on the ground, making sure we've got the best tech to give us that advantage, uh, and then ultimately delivering on the results. Our, our USP, the, the thing that we were once renowned upon was for getting those results in sales. Um, well, we want to be known for getting results in sales and lettings and leaning into that rather than leaning away from it. Uh, one from Ben, Chris, are there investor relations efforts to get new institutions and strategic buyers interested in buying the stake in Foxton's? Yes, absolutely. We're, we're very focused on uh, getting new investors on the register. Um, we've had quite an intense um, couple of weeks since the, since the results, but speaking to new institutions, explaining the story. And I think I'll refresh narrative and indeed refresh energy and really identify what's gone wrong with this business explaining how we're going to get that back we're going to get back on the front foot and indeed the speed at which we're getting on the front foot i think there's been a lot of excitement in the in the investor base so absolutely we look forward to um, getting getting further investment and, and and keeping the narrative um over the course of 2023 thank you for that guy chris mohammed i think you've actually managed to address all, all the questions from investors and of, and of course the company will review all the questions submitted today and we'll publish those responses on the investor meet company platform but just before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback which i know is particularly important to the company guy could i just ask you for a few closing comments i hope that we've given you a flavor um, both for the opportunity of the rebuild of foxes but also of our intent um, in order to make it happen. Uh, and I just wanted to underline the fact that the quality that we have, the latent um, uh, quality within this business uh, it is very, very compelling. And there are many aspects where we still lead the industry in many, in many, many ways. And, and my initial focus really now is to make sure that we're rebuilding as quickly as we can to demonstrate that this uh, opportunity is real and, and that we've got it. And actually, in a very short space of time, we've already started to see very, very positive numbers on, on the market share delivery, which is just the first step on the rest of this plan being delivered. Um, uh, and we're, we're hugely excited and would love you to be part of this journey with us. 
guy, Chris Mohammed. Thanks once again for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close the session as you'll now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Foxton's Group PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good afternoon to you all.